Do Jeff's first video, how to kill lots of deer. <laughs> At Christmas, uh, most people leave out a carrot for Rudolph. Jeff leaves out a steel trap and landmine. I was once asked by a lady, how do you get the wires inside of the antlers? And I responded to that lady by telling her, I have a resident deer herd in the backyard of my house, and I've been feeding them a very high copper content, and they've been growing wire in them ever since. It didn't take her but about 10 minutes. She walked down the hall before she really caught on to what I just said. Her skin is now his shower curtain. <laughs> That's it for part one, but join us after the break when some of the highlights of part two will hopefully make up for some of the lowlights of part one. <laughs> yep, doesn't get any better, does it? See you in a minute. Welcome back to Help Yourself, the show that helps you step by step do things that you probably had no desire to do in the first place. And what better example than this? Something called feminine movement. Not, as you might think, a guide to how to look feminine for women, but rather a guide on how to look feminine if you happen to be a 15 stone man. Hello, I'm Janaya Doyle, and welcome to your private consultation on feminine poise and movement. Does your first three second impression say guy in a dress? Or does it say feminine? <laughs> guy in a dress has it, I think. The way you walk is truly the most important aspect of your feminine image. Let me show you some of the common mistakes that I see a new transgender woman make. How many of you have seen this look before? <laughs> yeah, so you would have seen it before if you're in the Bulgarian women's javelin team. The back foot has all your weight on it, and the front foot is totally free. It's your feminine foot. We're going to be using it when you start to walk. Your feet will be turned out at about 11 o'clock and 1 o'clock. Uh, her foot position may be 11 and 1, but the giveaway is that her shoe size is 11 and a half. <laughs> so by now, any budding transvestite should be well on the way to becoming a convincing female. But there are three golden rules she hasn't mentioned. One, pee sitting down. Two, cancel the subscription to Sky Sports. And three, on no account, reverse into a parking space successfully. <laughs> Plus, uh, the oldest rule in the book, cup your hands. Let's start with the feminine hand positions. You want to always keep your hands together and you want to cup your hands. Now, let's try some positions with your hand in your head. Take your hand here, or like this, or maybe like this. Good. Or if you're on a table, you could do this. Wonderful. Much more graceful looking, I think you'll agree. <laughs> uh, so, another successful day of teaching women to behave just like women draws to an end. Be patient. It will take some time to incorporate these techniques into your everyday movement. I've enjoyed working with you. Thank you. Boy, is he in for a shock later tonight. <laughs> I wouldn't want you to think that this program concentrates on the trivial. Many of these guides tackle a variety of serious social issues, and surely none more so than this. Patricia Scarf Sensations. 30 ways to tie beautiful scarves. My name is Patricia Ryle. If you've ever thought you were the only woman in the world who couldn't tie a scarf right, let me use your mind. I own a dress shop, Patricia's, in Northern California. And every day I hear women saying they love scarves but they don't know how to tie them. That's Patricia's in Northern California for any terrorists watching. So, what exactly, what exactly are the 30 ways to tie a scarf? Fold the scarf in half, put it around your neck, bring the ends through the fold, pull up gently, Stand out the ends, and you have the hangman. Then just stand on the chair and tie the other end to the beam. <laughs> and we're going to make the knot necklace. Tie a loose knot 
in the center of your scarf, like so, and tie it around your neck. Brilliant. The knot necklace, or more accurately, the knot. <laughs> Still, it's amazing how a scarf can transform a frankly rather plain looking woman into a frankly rather plain looking woman with a scarf. <laughs> and now on one level at least, our prayers are about to be answered. <laughs> Patricia has many happy customers and has proved that a bit of lippy and a jazzy scarf can liven up even the frumpiest of faces. And so, from 30 ways to use a headscarf, we turn back to the trivial. If you're a single woman, you may have wasted many hours going to pubs and bars only to meet a string of hopelessly unsuitable men. But now, with what we're about to show you, you can meet a hopelessly unsuitable man in the privacy of your own home. Oh, hi, honey. I didn't hear you come in. <laughs> wow. Have you done something to your hair? Have you lost weight? No, don't tell me. Is that a new dress? New shoes? Well, whatever it is, you look amazing. Although not as amazing as he thinks he looks. <laughs> so who's this intended for? To be honest, no matter how lonely you are, you'd need to be pretty desperate to be flattered by an out-of-work actor talking into a camera lens in someone else's house. I got these for you today. For no particular reason other than to tell you that I adore you. Not because he's feeling guilty about that Puerto Rican waiter who snuck out of the flat just as you arrived. Hello? Oh, hi, John. Yeah, I'm fine. How are you? Why? What's happening tonight? Oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot I agreed to meet you and the guys at the pub tonight. <laughs> yes, the pub being the Sailor's Arms, where it's leather night. <laughs> Of course, any sailors watching will notice that according to the three stripes on his shorts, he's actually a rear admiral. I used to be such a terrible person before you came along and made me change my ways. I couldn't live without you. So I was wondering. Will you marry me? No, I'd say it was the end. <laughs> On so many levels. <laughs> also available is the follow-up in the series entitled How to Divorce a Secretly Gay Man. <laughs> Makes you wonder what kind of deluded fantasist would be mad enough to buy this kind of thing. <laughs> oh, dear God. Uh, and now something which no home should be without, even if it is just to prop up a wobbly table leg. <laughs> Yes, sexy sizes. A witty play on words. It would have been nice, but no, we have to make do with sexy sizes. Anyway, let's take a deep breath and plunge legs akimbo into the unknown. Hello, I'm Laura Keeler, and you are about to begin the most enjoyable fitness workout you will ever find. Sex sizes. Sexy sizes is a very serious workout. It's designed to strengthen, to build endurance, and to relieve the stress that builds up in us every day. But because you are working with a partner, you also have a chance to explore your sensuality. And each time you do the workout, you'll find something new about yourself or your partner. Like the fact that he's flatulent. <laughs> Of course, a serious danger of sexercises is the static build-up from rubbing artificial silk against artificial silk on a nylon carpet. This can cause irreversible perming of the hair. <laughs> so, let's have a look at some of the sexercise positions on offer. Hand thrust. One, two, three, four. Five, six, one, two, three, four, five. And the boy pushes the girl's legs open. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And now hold. Push back. <laughs> of 
for those without a partner, there's also the single sexercise workout video that helps build up a huge right forearm. <laughs> but I'm afraid that's uh, all the help you're going to get tonight because we're right out of time. Next week, helping you to help yourself, we promise a total absence of mad princesses. <laughs> and balmy cat women. Good night. Who's the best cat in the night? <laughs> It's you, Uncle Dampa. It's you. You're my cat and you're so good. You're the best cat in the neighborhood. You're my buddy. You're my friend. We'll be together till the very end. Dampa.